So let's talk about some applications of what we saw in our weathering of rocks lab yesterday. So what did you learn? I asked you to make three statements. You probably should have said something like, well, that some rocks weathered easily, some rocks don't weather easily, and probably said something about how the acids affect some rocks and not others. Didn't really matter what you said. You just had to make three definitive statements about what you saw. What was the original size of the stuff that we were weathering? Well, all of these were pebble sized. That's the size of sediment. Because remember that weathering and erosion go together and pebbles are a size of a sediment that is easily moved. Let's talk about if they were physical or chemical weathering. Well, part A with the water is a little tricky and we're not gonna get into too much, but it can be either chemical or physical depending upon which type of rock. Part B was very definitely physical where we're trying to scratch it. Part C was definitely chemical where we're looking at how does the acid interact with the rock and part D breaking with the hammer, certainly physical. Now, which rocks were the toughest or hardest to break? Should have been the quartzite and the granite. You might have said sandstone, possibly marble, but probably not because it reacted with the acid. But in the grand scheme of things, the granite and the quartzite are by far the hardest of these six rocks. Let's look at some examples that show how granite is hard. First of all, I'll talk about Independence Rock in Wyoming. This is a big exfoliation dome of granite. It's one big solid chunk of granite, and it's right along the Oregon Trail. So as pioneers were coming from the east and going to the west back in the 1850s, they didn't have roads. They were looking for landmarks. This was a very famous landmark along the Oregon Trail. It's a very distinctive chunk of rock. It's an exfoliation dome. And when people got there, they would carve names and messages and such into the rock. And you can still see those today. This was carved in with some rough tools in 1862, and you can still read it today. Now it's rained a lot on top of Independence Rock, and there's nothing to stop the water from running over the surface, but yet you can see how the water doesn't weather this rock very much. You can still read the inscriptions on there. Stone Mountain is another exfoliation dome. And at one time, Stone Mountain was under the ground. And all of the material that was softer that covered up Stone Mountain has been weathered. And then it was eroded. But Stone Mountain, because it's a big chunk of granite, is still sitting there very prominently today. If you've ever walked up Stone Mountain, you'll notice something like this. People used to walk up there and carve their names, call you know, people's birthdays, dates, whatever, into the rock. And as you walk up there, you can still see it as clear as day. And I want you to think about Stone Mountain. It's here, it rains a lot, and you get a lot of water running over Stone Mountain, yet you can still read the inscriptions on the granite, which is what Stone Mountain is. This kind of tells you that granite does not weather very easily. Now the Sioux Quartzite, Sioux Quartzite was, should have been actually the toughest rock, and this is where it comes from, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And Sioux Falls is a river, and you can see how the river is moving this way. That's a lot of water, and you can see it's moving really, really fast, yet it has only managed to cut a channel that wide into the Sioux Quartzite. Because the Sioux Quartzite is such a tough rock, it doesn't break down very easily, the water has had a hard time washing away. If this were limestone or some other type of rock, this waterfall would be miles that direction because it would have been eroding the rock or weathering and eroding the rock so much faster. But because Sioux Quartzite is so tough, you can see the evidence of its toughness in this picture. You use Sioux Quartzite as a building material and it's great because it lasts forever. It can set in the rain forever and it looks very, very good. It looks almost brand new at all times and in, in this area it's a very common building material it was such a tough rock that they used to pave streets with it before we had asphalt and concrete you would cut bricks and if you've never seen it this is a, a cobblestone or a brick street and you can see that pinkish color this is the quartzite because as wagons and horses and eventually cars ran over the street you would wear out you would break down the rock that the street was made of but quartzite was such a tough material, it lasted a long time. It didn't get ruts in it from tires. And so it was sought after because it was so tough and they made 
paving stones and they made streets all over the Midwest out of quartzite. But not some advantages, disadvantages. It's tough. It'll last forever. But man, is it hard to work with. I mean, the thing once you break it with a hammer, it was really, really hard to break it with a hammer. So it's really, really hard to form it into blocks. And some other applications of hard to weather rocks. Riprap. You don't want riprap that's going to break down that quickly you want a rock that's really tough because the water is going to try to break down the rock so we only use tougher rocks for riprap specifically granitic rocks in our area a lot of granite is what we use for our riprap railroad ballast that's the little rocks that goes in between railroad tracks as the train goes over the trains really heavy and it's going to push on and wear down those rocks fairly quickly so you use something tough and in this case, this is that Sioux Quartzite again. We don't use that in our area because we're not near Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We're going to use things that are granitic based. Headstones. Notice the difference between the headstones here. The one over here on the left, this is a limestone type of rock. And you can see that you can hardly read the inscription. It looks like it's been worn down because it has. Yet the one over here, you can still read the date on it. Turns out both of these headstones were from about the same time period, and they're in about the same area. But one of them is out of granite, which didn't break down because of its toughness. So headstones are another application of where you want to use a tough rock. Street curbs. Most curbs are made out of concrete, and the problem is, you've ever seen where a truck kind of goes over the curb, it breaks the concrete. Concrete is not necessarily that strong. But if you make a curb, out of granite especially it's gonna last a long time it's not gonna break when a big truck hits it now, which rocks were easiest to weather that certainly should have been the limestone and the scoria the lava rock the lava rock was easy to weather you, you know why because it has a lot of holes no water can get into it in hawaii there are large mountains that are made out of this rock and it also rains a lot on one side of the island. So as that water moves over that lava rock, it weathers it very, very dramatically. That's why Hawaii has some very dramatic landscapes like this, where you can see that the rock has just been broken down and then moved away. Caves and sinkholes, they form in limestone because it is so easily weathered, especially by water. That brings us to the topic of carbonation. This is a trait of limestone and other rocks that have uh, a material in it called carbonate it's part of their chemical composition well as rain falls through the air there's carbon dioxide in the air and water and carbon dioxide will combine naturally and make carbonic acid it's acidic well which rock did you see was most affected by acid that was the limestone here's what happens you get the carbonic acid from rain interacts with the calcium carbonate which is what limestone is and they chemically react to form calcium bicarbonate which is a much different material that breaks down and then releases carbon dioxide again that's the fizzing that you saw and makes a material that is a much more easily broken down so you don't want to use limestone as a building material especially like a wall this is a wall in Dallas, Texas, and you can see it was pretty new when I saw this. You can see it's, it's breaking apart very easily. So why would they do that there? Well, it was the rock that they have in that area. They don't have a lot of granite. And this is a case where they didn't want to make it out of concrete, so they got plenty of limestone. They made a limestone wall, but it's not going to last very long. Here's another example. Grand Cayman Island in the Caribbean, a uh, big fancy hotel, and they had all these walls and steps outside made out of limestone which is not going to last, but they can use limestone here for a couple of reasons. It's the only rock they got on the whole island, and it's a place where it doesn't rain a lot. So using limestone like this in a place where it doesn't rain a lot might be okay. And what can we say about sandstone? Now, we looked at Cleopatra's needle before, and I want you to think about if this obelisk had been made out of limestone instead of sandstone. It would be a case where you can't read one side anymore. It would totally have fallen apart by now. So sandstone appears to be a little bit tougher than limestone, and it is. 
but sandstone is tricky because you can have some fairly soft sandstone and it is actually weathered fairly easily by abrasion or just rubbing. You might have seen that as you try to rub the rocks of sandstone in the activity. Well, this is some sandstone along San Diego, along the cliffs there, and people walk back and forth, and just the action of their feet has rubbed off enough sandstone that it's made a little channel. You can actually cut your name and carve into the sandstone pretty easily. Which, of course, I, I did. I did this with my keys, so it's not necessarily that tough a rock. This is a sandstone sidewalk in a very, very old city, northern France. And you can see the rock has a little bit of dip in it because this is where people were stepping with their foot the most over time, right in the center of the sidewalk. And just the action of people's feet rubbing up against the sandstone has rubbed it off and broken it down. Now, it's not super soft but it's not super hard either. So sandstone kind of falls in the middle. And that's what we want to say about our sandstone. It's kind of a middle ground. It's not super resistant like the quartzite or the granite, but it's not super soft and as easy weathered like the limestone or the lava rock. So what happens if you've got a mix of rock? Let's say you've got, out there in nature, you've got some hard rock and soft rock. That's what we call differential weathering because they're not going to break down the same. And this makes for some very distinctive shapes in our rocks. If you get a harder rock over softer rock and they weather differently, you can get some weird shapes. You can definitely see how that is a different rock than this down here. This is a harder rock over the softer rock. Same concept here. The harder rock's on top of the softer rock. The softer rock is weathering and becoming smaller faster than the rock on top. This particular situation leads to a unique landform that we call mushroom rocks. And you can see why. They have kind of a mushroom shape when they got that, that big blob of harder rock on top over a skinnier portion of softer rock. They also lend to the formation of hoodoos. Hoodoos are formed because of differential weathering. You've got layers of different types of rock that are breaking down at different rates. Also leads to what's called a balanced rock formation. This is when we get a situation that looks like somebody picked up a rock and set it on top of a little small sliver of something else. That wasn't the case. It just means that the rock underneath was wearing down or weathering quicker than the material on top. Eventually, in a situation like this here, that rock is going to weather enough that it's going to become too small to support the weight of the rock on top of it, and it'll probably fall over. Marble versus granite, especially with countertops. These are both very popular building materials that we use for countertops. Well, the problem with marble is, well, they reacted with acid, didn't they? And a lot of our foods are acidic, especially things like citrus and vegetables. So that means if you spill orange juice on marble, it's going to react with the marble. If you spill orange juice on your counter enough over time, the marble gets weathered and your countertop breaks down. Granite, we saw it doesn't react with acid. So that's a you know, win for granite right there. Now marble is also a lot more porous. And we saw that way back in January because we tested marble and granite. Anything that you spill in marble can get into the material easily. So if you spill something like red Kool-Aid on your marble and you don't wipe it up quick enough, you've now stained the material because the water went into the marble with that red dye, and now it's permanent. Granite is not nearly as poor, so it's not as easy to stain. Water doesn't like to go into granite that quickly. Though you spill your red Kool-Aid, you can wipe it up before it has a chance to soak into the granite and stain it. Marble can also be scratched more easily. You saw that in the lab. So if you're using a knife to cut your uh, vegetables on the marble countertop, Every time the knife scratches the marble, it's going to leave a scratch. It's going to tear up your countertop. However, granite's really tough to scratch. You can cut things directly onto granite as opposed to having to use a specific cutting board on top of marble. And it's because this 
because of these characteristics, and that Rana is actually much more widely used for countertops now than than they were in the past. Years ago, it was a big thing, like in the 70s, marble countertops were all the rage. People started to figure out, hey, these is not got these problems. It stains, it breaks down, it reacts with the acids. Can we get something better? So they went with granite. Now, one of the problems with granite is it's a little more expensive, and it's a lot harder to work with because granite is so tough. It makes it hard to cut. You and I can't cut granite easily at home. It's just too tough. You have to have it specially cut, which makes it more expensive. Now, it's tougher in the long run. It's going to last longer, but it is a lot more expensive up front. The marble is a lot softer, and you can cut it into many different shapes a lot easier than you can with, with granite. But that's the comparison of marble versus granite countertops and they're both used for countertops and they all have their own set of characteristics that lend to whether or not you want to use one versus the other the marble has a different look than the granite and so people still prefer the look of the marble so they're willing to uh, put up with the shortcomings of marble instead of getting granite